All right. So hi, everyone. Um, this is Tacey, and she is the first one on my channel that who agreed um and i mean there were other people too but somehow i was drawn to your energy and your story what we are going to be talking about we just literally um met and uh, i wanted to keep it as raw as possible and to hear your story first hand in a way you know without any 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 details so Maybe there's going to be a couple of questions that I will want to ask you that maybe other people will want to know about. And yeah, so what, tell me more about yourself, you know, tell me what we're going to be talking about here today. Hi guys. Yes. Um, just happy to be here. Um, what we're going to talk about is basically, um, I call it my breast cancer um, journey. So I literally was diagnosed at 38 with breast cancer. Um, wow, I was playing by memories about that first time you're hearing the word, the C word, and it's cancer. Um, it's um, basically for, um, I've seen your, your YouTube, it's inspiring. When you asked the question, I went, yeah, let me go ahead and tell my inspirational story of being a breast cancer survivor is what they call us. Um, but anybody who survived cancer or even their loved ones um, as represent them are considered survivors as well. That's, they had to go through the same thing as well. As well. Yeah. Before you go on and, um, and tell us your story, your journey, uh, what was the first thing that you thought of or how did you feel once you heard the C word? Um, numb, scared, life ending. Is there hope? Am I gonna die? Yeah. What do I have to go through? So it's a weird survival mm -hmm. instinct that kicks in where it's like, wow. I remember I got the I got the call from I was at work and my doctor um, told me. Uh, I am so sorry. Um, I know you're 38, but you're, you know, we found um, breast cancer on the right side of your, um, of your chest. Um, here's the, here's a doctor or an oncologist that I recommend. And he said, I'm so sorry. And he said, call me if you need anything. So it was more of a numbness and you just felt like, okay, and you mm -hmm. hang up the phone and then it, it hits you. And I started to cry in the middle of my job. And thank God my uh, coworker came and she said, Stacy, she said, you giggle a lot. So is that a giggle or is that a cry? <laughs> and I said, I said, not good news. So she, she was the first person that, you know, I didn't even tell my husband yet because it was such mm -hmm. a shock. And then I told him. So yeah, it's a, um, numb and then a crash and then survival mm -hmm. then kicks in and yes um if you want to hear the story of like all the process because it's not just being diagnosed yeah that's what i would like you to touch on and what stands out to you you know the most like now you overcame it. And when you look back at it, where were those points where, when you were like, oh, this is important, that was important, or how I acted or what I thought at that moment, you know? Just kind of take us through that process. Okay. Um, well, the first process is basically a <laughs> early detection is a must. Um, that helps out so much um, because I was taught at such a young age. Um, to do, you know, uh, self mm -hmm. uh, exam. So I knew something felt funny mm -hmm. when I first did that. And I said, well, that felt weird. So then my instinct or intuition, I call it intuition, gut feeling, was saying, mm, you know what, check this out. Mm -hmm. So even when, so I'm really stressing that people listen to that gut feeling, that intuition, that that little voice that says, hey, do this, do that, something's going on. 
So even when I told my husband, he was like, oh, it's probably not. Went to my doctor who just uh, told me I had cancer. Oh, you're 38. You're okay. I said, well, can I? I said, do you mind if I take a mammogram? Yeah, but you really don't have to, but you can, you can do that. So then they found like little, little lumps. Again, they're saying, oh, no, no problem. But why don't we do a biopsy? So normally my old self would stop it there. So yeah. no, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But that, that intuitive feeling was saying like, come on, do it. Mm-hmm. So did the biopsy wait and that's where my story came to where I found I, I had the seat for the cancer word. Yeah. Um, it makes you realize that what my life was, it was like a routine. And even today you still have a routine, but it's more joyful, mm-hmm. more weak to your step because you're, I'm, I'm very positive. Even my coworkers would say that you just realize like, hey, life is very short. Um, I caught it early, thank, thank goodness. Um, some people find it later on in, in life. Um, my grandmother, um, she had breast cancer as well. So I have to thank her inspiration because she waited too long. And she didn't want to burden anybody. So that taught me, this isn't a burden. This is to take care of myself. This is to make sure I'm safe. And if I'm safe, all my loved ones, my friends, everyone else is safe. So I really stress to people, um, make sure you take care. That self-love is really, really important. You're always hearing it. Mm -hmm. It's important. You you got to do that because it saved my life because I was able to catch it when the first stage. Unfortunately, with my grandmother, it was stage four, the size of a grapefruit. Wow! And it was um, spread to other places. Um, what I said in our email that you know I came from a religious background where. Um, if something happens to you, you know, a car wreck, cancer, um, lo- losing a loved one, losing your boyfriend, losing your girlfriend, um, you did something to cause that. So my mind framed, I believe wholeheartedly, if I felt that and believe that, mm-hmm. I think the term, the, it would have been a different outlook. Yeah. That's very important that you're touching on that right now. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, um, a lot of religions and a lot of people are teaching you like, Hey, you know, because you did this and I don't know an example, um, but if you do this, um, then you mustn't, you know, you had cancer. And the first thing someone said, well, Stacy, what did you do? I said, I and do anything I'm going on with life and you know, doing the right thing and doing the good thing not perfect so I remember walking I, at that time I was walking from work to home it was pretty close and when I went for that walk I had a really deep conversation with myself I didn't care if anybody saw me talking to myself thinking I was crazy it's like I was deeply having that one-on-one kind of conversation internally I've never had before. It's like, okay, you have cancer. Okay. They're saying you caught it early. Okay. That's one plus. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, one plus. Okay. If I didn't catch it early, did you follow your instinct and it was, you know, you're catching? Okay. That's number two. At least you're doing something about it. Mm -hmm. And as I was walking down, I actually asked myself, was this my fault? What did I do? And I told myself, no, I'm not going to think that way. Um, and I told myself, I said, that's bologna and cheese that I'm blaming myself for something that I had no control over. Yeah. 
So then my mindset changed and um, I've thought about it for a while, but all of a sudden that definitely helped me to realize, hey, you know what? God, universe, goddess, anyone. They're not here to cause turmoil and, and chaos. They're here to push you along, push you forward, or push you, you know, to where you need to go. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what this cancer thing is, but I'm going to go with a grain of salt and just go with it. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went through the chemo. Um, but I also wanted to tell you about my second intuitive instinct that kicked in. So I went to an oncologist. They were good. So they wouldn't need to be done. Basically, they believed that I should do chemo, then surgery, then, you know, if I further to go any further with anything else. Mm. I said, okay. So they're telling you that you're, you're, you're realizing, okay, this is more knowledge of cancer than I ever want to ever understand. But they took their time, their patient, and they wanted to get started immediately. I said, okay, let's get it. Because um, my breast cancer was hormone based, which means my own hormones was feeding that cancer. They said within 10 years, of, if it was 10 years ago, I would be in trouble. But because of modern medicine, they were able to, you know, understand it a little bit more and actually help me to control that a lot more. So they were saying like, hey, yeah, it's aggressive. Yes, it's. Um, you know, hormone based, but because there's so many people like you, it's like, okay, I'm not alone on this little boat of, of learning about yourself. Um, we're able to control it a little bit more and survival has gone from like 70 to 90. I went like, and I basically looked at him and say, that's a terrific uh, news. Thank you. And he started laughing. He said like, well, I've never been told thank you, but <laughs> he said, um, my pleasure. He said, my pleasure. Um, so he was good, but something inside me told me, go for a second opinion. And I believe that wholeheartedly. If it's my grandmother only went for one and it didn't go well. And again, she, she was teaching me while I was going through this and she was guiding me as well. Um, and taking care of me. So um, Do you believe your grandma yeah. was giving you intuitive nudges? <laughs> yes. It happens very, much. very much. Yeah. Um, my father also died 18 years ago. He died of cancer. Felt oh, that little nudge too, like, come on, go. Mm -hmm. and so as soon as I went for my second opinion, pretty much the same procedure, everything else, she was just going to add one more drug that's going to help me a little bit more. And just the connection, my um, connection with her was outstanding. I felt completely comfortable with her. I felt like I, I could tell her anything. So that's very important too, that, that if you're going to be with this person for five years and they're taking care of you, mm -hmm. you know, feel pretty comfortable. So I, I pretty much went for that um, second um, opinion. And basically told her, I said, okay, that's pretty good. They told me this practically same thing. And she said, yep. I said, I'll take you as my doctor. No, 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 no. This is not what that's supposed to be. I said, oh, that's nice. Inside, I told her, inside here is saying you're my doctor. I said, so you got me. <laughs> she said, like, okay. So um, went through the chemo, lost all my hair. I was a complete ball eagle. And realized I looked pretty good ball. Was not, it was, it was, I basically was saying like, oh, okay, got cancer. I found out huh, I look good ball. Nice to know. <laughs> no, and what um, I'm listening to, I really like your, your perception and your take on certain things. Um, you know, because many times um, you'd notice where 
people, especially women, right, when they lose their hair, this is another traumatic experience on top of cancer itself, right? Um, and I like your take on that because I think every time something would hit you, you are like, all right, take a step back. Let's take a look at the situation from 360. What do I want to do? How do I want to react? Yeah, I'm still processing everything. It's not about ditching those feelings of fear, you know, and questioning what's going to happen. But it's like you chose to approach it certain ways. Um, and, you know, the moment that we called each other, I saw your uh, big, beautiful smile. And I was like, I know exactly why this woman is, you know, the way she is. And people like that um, overcome a lot of things. Now, when it comes to... Uh, religion when it comes to karma when it comes you know doesn't matter um what you believe in there are so many layers of of karmic behaviors it's not coming only from this lifetime and it's not for us to you know to think oh my god what i have done wrong in this or past life it's about hey this is my challenge what am i going to do about this because here right now it's almost like i like to say you're being monitored from above whatever you believe in how are you going to deal with the situation right now right and what you're going to do what's your approach like because we we have so many um you know karmic events that we bring in from past lives and um and we don't need to like if you want to dig in that and you, you can have therapy on that and stuff like that but when it comes to situations like that very serious illnesses in a moment, I think you were for how this whole process in a moment, talking to yourself, which I believe everything that I'm saying is just my take because I haven't been there. All I can say is what I've approached, you know, from you. Um, I saw from you how you approach situations. How present can I be? You know, how can I, uh, how will I see the world after I overcome this? And not given in to that fear or guilt uh, when you talked about, you know, Christian background, I think um, is what was a very strong driving force for you. And the intuitive nudges, I think that's why I'm so boring for a lot of people on my channel. I'm like, practice, you know, develop your intuition. It's not about tarot. It's not about, you know, tools like that. You, you don't have to be a tarot reader or, I don't know, do something with it professionally. It's such a strong tool that you carry with you that's going to get you out of really difficult situations in life. Yes, entirely. Um, whenever you would say, <laughs> hey, guys, I'm not going to put anything here. Go by what your intuition goes. It's like, ah, okay. And it's like, take a moment. And like when you say, take a moment. Sometime during that time of um, chemo, Anybody who has gone through chemo, it is, it's a beast. <laughs> and I had someone say, hey, Stacey, you're going to go through chemo. You know, they were very positive. And then I have one person who was realistic. Oh, Stacey, it's going to be a pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, I went like, okay. She said, but you'll make it. You'll do fine. Everything's going to be okay. So sometimes... You were hearing, you know, there is that positive affirmation, which I got really into. And even with my um, religion background and exploring new ones and doing um, other ones, there was one affirmation, uh, one lady that I listened to and her name, if it's okay if I mention her, she's part of the uh, affirmation. Her name is like Bella Ruth. That was the part, the part, the part, the part stick. There it is. Oh, <laughs> uh, she, she, she was very helpful to me, and she's, um, she does um, affirmation, and I love how she opens up, saying like, "Hi, you know, this is my name. I, you know, this is." Positive affirmation. It does not matter. This is not to change what you are or what religion or anything you're doing already. This is just to compliment and to help you. And that's the whole point. It's just to help you. It is. That affirmation helped me do a lot of things. It was saying, like, basically, <laughs> that time that I sent you through the email, 
it was saying like, hey, thank you, cancer, for coming into my life. I know you're not here to hurt me. I love you. Yes, she was saying, I love you. I like you. Uh, thank you for helping me to push me to where I need to be. Thank you for the lessons that you have taught me during this time. I understand what my purpose is. I understand what my need is. This is kind of what it was. Then I remember the last thing she said, you can go now. It gave permission saying like, hey, I understand you're here. Um, it is okay to feel fear. It's okay. And I told people, some of these people in there were like, are you crazy? You say you love cancer. I said, well, I, I try not to fear cancer, mm -hmm. not fed into the fear. It's like, hey, I know you're here. Thank you for the lessons that you taught me. You can go now. I don't need you here anymore. You can you know, leave from my body. Don't come back. Cancer free. Just um, just those words really caught me when I first heard it. I said, like, okay, I'm going to start listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or listen to that that intuitive saying, like, you're here. I know you're here. I'm not avoiding you. I'm not saying you're not here. I'm not going to fear you. I'm just going to know that you're here and that you can go. Yeah. That's it. And you are you are a super super strong person now. Um, what you told us here today, you did have um, a lot of people who are really supportive. Um, and why I'm saying supportive, you know, people can be supportive, but people can um, kind of take away your power at the same time. You know where I'm get where I'm getting with this. If you did have people around you who are like, "Oh my God, what we're we gonna do?" You know, um, she has cancer, and they would start panicking. Yes, they care for you, but like there is already a lot of fear that could rub off on you, even if you're trying to be strong. And um, it's very important to talk to people who are not um, giving you more fear and more. Ne I don't want to call it negativity because they're not wishing you any you know, negativity or pain, but just kind of filter out what you hear and what you're taking with you in situations like that. Right. Um, yeah, with certain people, I had to take some people not out of my life, but I had to mm -hmm. tell them, hey, hi, yeah, I don't need, <laughs> that's one other thing, thanks for um, bringing that up. That brought back another memory of where you had to be around, you know, you don't have to be around positive people. Mm -hmm. Just like that lady that was very, you know, to the point, and she was a cancer survivor. There was just some people that were just saying like, oh my goodness, I'm Stacy, is it growing and stuff like that? And you had to tell them, it's like, no, it's not growing. Mm -hmm. And there were some times where I had to say, hey, I have to put you aside for the moment because right now I'm literally fine for my life. Yeah. And I can't have those kind of thoughts and like, are you okay? Are you this? It's like, I am perfectly fine. I am outstanding. Mm -hmm. even though I am completely well. And like you said with hair, yes, hair is very important. I was wearing braids, weave and everything else. And now I went from that to completely no hair. So that was another hurdle where I was looking like, okay. I, I literally went and got a buzz cut uh, as soon as, um, you know, little chunks were starting to fall off. So like, mm -hmm. forget this. And my husband was out saying, he said like, we're going to go. We're going to go to your beauty salon. We're going to tell them what's going on. Don't hide it. They're going to support you. And so when I went... She was there. She said, you're ready for the stage. You're ready. I'm going, yeah. <laughs> and started the buzz cut. And I was like, hey, you know, um, this is okay. This is another part of me that I'm, it's almost like layers of you that was being taken off. And all of a sudden you're going like, oh, wow. That was terrific. Or, hey, I feel better. Or I feel whether it was spiritual mm -hmm. so I did experience like spiritual physical um 
layering off of certain things. And I was going like, wow, this feels natural. Or other ones where I would take off a layer and I go like, mm, yeah, I don't like that. So you do start to figure out things that you like and things that makes you happy, but also things that, you know, that can help someone else. So immediately I was thinking, when I make it, anybody that asks me anything, and I told my job, I say, hey, anyone else that gets, you know, breast cancer, or any kind of cancer, but particularly breast cancer, I say, you tell them where I'm at. I am an administrative assistant. Um, so I, I'm always contacting people in, in my department. I say, you tell them, come see me. And they were so supportive. Um, times that I <laughs> got, out, got out of bed and basically fell back into bed gently and just went like, yeah, I'm not going to make it today. Sent a message and they were saying, like, don't you worry about anything and my one of my supervisors a very good point he said Stacy you're okay you're going to be okay you were basically given the permission to give you legalized poison of chemo and they're going to make sure you're taken care of so we're understanding what the process is don't mm -hmm. you worry you're okay and so just um, I have to say being around people who were supportive really, really does help and pushing those people aside that, like you said, not negative, but just not in your, not in your realm or in your circle at the point in your life. Um, there are some people who are family members that you just can't ever, ever get rid of them. But you can yeah. push them aside saying like, hey, not, yeah. not today or, you know, hey, wait till I get done with this and I'll, I'll reconnect with you. Yeah. So. And I think, uh, you know, if it depends what kind of person you're talking to us so who say a family member, um, being really clear um, and nice about it, why? Um, you want to keep maybe a bit of a distance or, you know, you would want to take some more time for yourself away from that person. I think it also educates them too, in a way, um, how to react to certain situations and kind of open their horizon too. like, oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I'm doing it regardless, you know? Right. I had some family members do that where there's like, you know what, Stace, I'm, you know, I understand, um, how are you doing? It's just like the conversation changed. I say, and then I say, I'm doing great. How are you? Well, you look great. And then I'll be having my bow hand. I said, of course I am. And go something like that and try to make them laugh and say like, okay, you know, you know, this is a, a journey. So it's okay. And there was days um, that were, you know, not good days. Mm -hmm. uh, where you're just going like, <sighs> Man, that stinks. <laughs> what helped you to gone. overcome those days that were not the greatest? Believe it or not, um, mm, what helped was my oncologist. She told me before I even began chemo. All right, Stacy. Um, how you're going to get through this it's all by attitude and I'm looking at her I said you're an oncologist you're a medicine and you're telling me attitude she said yes so that was that connection that I said like okay so she said 90 percent you will have a good attitude I said okay so I have 10% of leeway to have a bad attitude, to have an off day. Yeah, because she said 90% of the time you're going to have to have a good attitude. And I went like, challenge accepted. Sure, I could do that. Um, so during those 10% of rough days, one, I thought about, okay, 90, 10, okay. 
uh, and believe it or not, walk in um, even times when you know you're exhausted and tired. And sometimes, in my cases, I was able to move. I know there's other cases where there's people who can't move. Just a lot of times, all of them, the nurses, gynecologists, friends, family, would just simply just say, hey, sis, and sit me outside just for fresh air or to watch a funny movie or to absolutely, there were some times, well, on my rough day, I wrote out what I my thoughts and there was days where I say you know what you stink <laughs> this stinks this stinks okay I got that out and then just to start laughing and say like you know what we're good because one I'm walking two I'm still alive three start naming those off start <laughs> naming all those positive things and then all of a sudden Hey, I have friends. I have this. I have um, um, positive affirmation. I have families. Um, shoot. Um, there was times, other things. Sorry about that. Oh, um, there was other things. So to answer your question, those were the times where during those 10%, sometimes you just had to feel it. So that was also mm -hmm. part of my journey as well. Okay, if you're feeling this fear, if you're feeling this anxiety, if you're feeling this, feel it, know what it is, accept it, and then say, okay. And then push it away, say like, okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. Sometimes you have to um, accept that feeling and yeah. accept that, 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 that feeling and then you'll be like okay that's what it feels like okay push that away okay then you say okay let's watch a funny movie mm -hmm. <laughs> or let's pet a doggy <laughs> yeah i think it's really important in in a lot of cases to take the time and feel those really stressful you know or maybe sad emotions um because by pushing it away all the time, not really allowing yourself to heal in a way too, because you gotta be positive, as she said, 90% of the time, we know there is that 10, we still have to allow to feel a certain way. Because I believe in my eyes, it's also part of healing. You can't just brush it off, it's there, you know? Um, and uh, instead of making it your enemy, just understanding, understanding it, like you said, right? I know what's happening. I know what I'm dealing with, right? And maybe at the end of the day, I'll watch a movie. So, and I really love that story where um, where she talked about your attitude to start with. Because I think in many cases, when it comes to illnesses, it's about it's about here, you know? Yeah. Um, I remember my mom told me um, a story. My mom is a masseuse. Um, I'm not going to use medical terms because um, I, don't, I don't want to um, be mistaken, but I'm just going to try and explain it as much as I can. She, um, she was doing a practice in, in one of those you know, retreats where people um, come up to really difficult illnesses, where they have to recover, recovery type of you know, um, a building. And it's a whole city basically here where, where we live. Um, there's a lot of trees, you know, there is, there is just very, very nice and kind of vibrant environment for people to come and heal. And how, how she would try and make people come back from certain things. For example, if someone just had a stroke and they cannot um, move their arm, um, she would have to massage that arm and, and, and kind of say to people, you're moving your arm, I can see your fingers moving, you know, but kind of not showing it to them. Uh, can you feel this? Can you feel this? You're moving your arm. So it's, again, it's affirmation after affirmation in a way, you know? Um, and I know that it does help in the first initial stages, you know, of, of someone um, being 
um, let's say not being able to move uh, certain parts of the body, but the more you wait, you know, um, the more difficult it gets for someone to actually be able to move that hand. But again, it's very similar, you know, you're doing this, you're moving it. There's nothing wrong with you, you know, just a temporary kind of thing. You'll get back to, to normal. Get back. Yeah. And if you keep believing that, I wholly believe that. And I know there are going to be situations and people listening that are saying, like, hey, I've done this. So it hasn't, you know, happened. Just keep it up. It's like, do it for you and yeah. make sure it's making you happy. So there would be <laughs> that time um, where I decided to, I was trying very hard to do, I did the chemo next to surgery. So that was a whole different experience um, from going from, okay, I've never had surgery until like, okay, oh, by the way, you need at least three surgeries. And it's like, holy smokes. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was a trip. Um, that, there was an affirmation that I believe that held with my surgery that said, hey, your body is working with the doctors, working with the installer, forgive me, um, the person that puts you to sleep. Your body knows what's going on. It's it's working with the doctors, not working against it. That I believe and can't stand against them. Okay, buddy, we're going to work with them, not against them. They're here to help us, not hurt us. And that's very important because you're thinking, okay, they're going to cut me, they're going to hurt me. It's like, no. They've been trained. They've gone to school. They got the best education. And they're here to help you. So there was a period of time where I was trying to do a lump something, which means just to remove the lump of where that cancer cell was. Mm -hmm. um, it was no more than a centimeter or two. So it was like that stage one. And I said, well, let's try to keep it. And my oncologist was outstanding. She wanted to work with me. She said, okay, so there's two choices. A lump something is to remove just that lump of that where that cancer cell was in around that or a full mastectomy is actually to remove that particular uh, area and um, that was another just like with the hair mm -hmm. you know being a woman being a woman you know you're seeing yourself as you know you have, you know you have breasts yeah your chest and so that was another um, uh, universe goddesses saying like, okay, we're gonna handle this one. It's like, so I was trying very hard and then one day it just clicked and I say, you know what? I'm still me, I'm still a woman, I'm still Stacy, I'm still this person. If I remove this, it doesn't mean I'm not me. Yeah. So then I went to my, they gave um, me a choice and I say, you know what? I want to not worry about it and not have it in the back of my mind. Go ahead and remove that right there. Okay. Okay. Um, they were saying, you done so well with chemo. I feel very comfortable you keeping your left side because there was nothing there. I say like, Hey, that's a plus. I get to keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and everything. So did that, did the surgery. Um, the surgery went so outstanding that they were going like, okay, um, this was an outstanding surgery. Like, and I said like, really? I said, do I get, you know, they were saying, do you want an implant? Mm -hmm. And I said like, yes. <laughs> And originally I said, no, I wasn't going to do that because I didn't like more surgery. And there's, like, um, there's an oncologist surgeon and she was outstanding. And she told me, Stacy, 10 years ago, you know, and I would tell you, okay, no problem. She said, yeah, I was interested. And I'm like, hmm, okay. I had to think about it. And I said like, okay, intuition, gut feeling, how you feeling? I feel pretty good. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> so we went through that process. So 
elective surgery to do the mastectomy, outstanding. Um, surgery to put the implant, outstanding. Um, there was that moment where I could only lift it here. Mm -hmm. You go through physical therapy and and you do. You go from here and that's all you've reached. And now you can see me just going like, acting like everything is just fine. So I'm just here to show you. It's like your body is outstanding. It wants to heal itself. It wants to help you. It doesn't want to hurt you ever. It just, it made you realize that your body is such a magnificent. Um, you are magnificent because your body just goes, okay, what you want me to do? What you want me to do? What you want me to do? That's all it wants you. It's, yeah. it's asking you, what do you want me, what do you want me to do? Oh, I need to heal this. Okay, you know what? You got it. Whether you want to or not, I'm going to heal this. Do your part. And I need to be stretched. I need to do this to get mo mobility back. Yeah. You do your part. So it was understanding your body wants to heal itself, but understanding too that you yourself had to help it along whenever yeah. it needs to and stuff. So that is all my story. And um, my journey. Thank you for sharing, Stacy. Um, you know, when I was when you were talking, I was just observing. There are so there are so many layers that are very uh, personal. Certain decisions that are very personal. You know, you being uh, placed in certain situations that you've never been to. You know, but like hair like do I want an implant you know how do we feel about certain things how do how am I going to look at this situation and I'm really happy that you continuously just listen to your higher self you know throughout yeah. this whole journey because it was guiding you and um, I want to talk a little bit about as you said your body is magnificent um, this is so so true because even if we go to sleep we think we're resting, but there is so much going on. You know, in every hour, there is something that is rejuvenating, you know, organs. Mm -hmm. And there is, I think, even a chart by an hour, you know, what's happening in our bodies. Um, and we also, well, I like to say, you know, we spirits in a body. Um, yes. And our spirit is working during the night too, uh, which can be visiting people that you love. You know, um, I, I get emails from people saying, hey, you visited and told me this, it helped. So it's also on the astral. It's not only our bodies that's magnificent, but it's our soul and what it does at night and what our brain does at night, you know, and every organ really. And I think um, I really like your take on how you see yourself as a whole, you know, and uh, also that story about, would you like to touch a bit more on how your maybe beliefs changed over time because um were you kind of strict christian before or uh yes i was um christianity and now i call myself kind of like a laid-back christian learning everything it's everything is like <laughs> it's hard to put a label on it <laughs> yeah it's like so, so many people put label and i wish it would be like yeah oh, what, what religion are you and it's like um I would have to say, I said, really, I'm pretty way back on yeah. um, that strict uh, Christianity um, belief. And not to say Christianity of all is strict. But the one that I went through was more like, okay, if he did something, oh, you have cancer, what did you do? Mm -hmm. you did something bad or you did a sin or anything else like that so that changed my aspect from oh what did you do or you know blaming someone like saying like oh you know what um yes I do believe in karma but this wasn't you know it didn't feel like karma it didn't say like oh yeah you know what I came back it was more like it went from that what I told you earlier that belief of you did something wrong and you earned this cancer because you did something wrong and you need to confess and um, it went from that to hey God I when I walk down that street I say you know what 
dead doesn't want to hurt me ever. So that mindset of, hey, God is going to, you know, attack you or, you know, punish you and everything mm-hmm. else that they taught you in like, um, in the Bible, like, you know, he punished for those. And it's like, no, he doesn't. God is his universe, higher up, higher you. Do not punish you. Yeah. They're pushing you forward. They're pushing you above. Sometimes they might even have to push you down mm-hmm. <laughs> to say like, hey, settle down. You're, you're doing this and this and that. So that concept of my religion went kind of like, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of like, why are you? I'm like, oh, lay back. Well, what do you believe about this? Or what do you believe about you know, uh, a higher being? And it's like, well, yes. What do you think? God and universe and goddesses and whatever they're a higher being it's like they're here to help you along with your body so that's why I said all of that um, you realize bits and parts of you especially um, when I'm, I was doing my religion it's more like okay going through that routine instead of saying hey what did my, what does my intuition say? What does my gut feeling say? What does what do I say? Mm-hmm. Me myself. Great teaching, you know. You know, you can get all the teaching you can, but you still gotta listen to this. You gotta listen because it saved my life. It made me push myself to go from when they said hey we need to take a biopsy I would have ran and never took it mm-hmm. but that um, I do believe my grandmother and my father they passed away they're you know they're just in a different form they're, yeah um, I felt that kind of push as well and, so, hey. and, <laughs> and you're talking about regenerating and dreams um regenerating in the brain and there have been sometimes where dreams you wake up and i'm going like okay i'm going to listen to that particular dream and i'm going to listen to that intuition so yeah i went from this teaching that a higher up god is punishing you to no they never do that they just want to push you mind you during that journey you're going like what in the world why am i going through this now it's like anybody that asks and they tell me and they say like well weren't you doing this and that and it's like weren't you a christian i say don't you i can still be a christian but i I can still do me i can still be me that's all that matters. It does seem like not only one through, um, not only your body went through me, but, but at the same time, there was a lot of spiritual processes happening behind the scenes too, uh, which often happens with really difficult illnesses. Um, how would you say, um, if you could compare your old version of self to your new version of self, so what, what would your new version of self right now would advise the older version of yourself? Um, my new version, like this we're doing, was very shy. I wouldn't have done it. I was like this little cocoon and everything else. So I was simply, if I went back to myself, I would simply put out my hand and I say, it's going to be okay. And give me my smile and it's generous. It's, it's, you know, I'm not going to smile like this and lie to you. And it's like, everything's going to be okay. And I would tell myself that. And I know myself, I would put my hand in my own hand and say, okay, because I am a very, very, if you tell me, if you tell me something, I'm going to believe you 90% of the time because I'm just that um, just trustworthy, uh, faith, um, believing of um, the greater good of you, 
in every day. So that's what I would tell myself. I would just look at myself and say, everything's going to be okay. You know, what what you're feeling now, it's going to be okay. And I know a lot of people, if they do listen to this, if they do listen to this, have probably said that where they would look at themselves and say, hey, everything's going to be okay. Um, the heartbreak, um, um, the hardship, losing loved ones, losing, um, sometimes losing yourself. Mm -hmm. It will, it will be okay. It is what I would tell, them, tell myself. And, and I am, I'm totally cancer free, uh, loving life. Loving who I am, still learning, <laughs> and it's fun. the The journey is like, okay, what's next? Yeah, you never stop learning, right? You no, never stop learning. You never <laughs> stop learning, and even if you want to, it's funny that the universe will go like this and go, "No, sorry, <laughs> yeah. here's the next one." You're going like. I get it. <laughs> I know. Sometimes you do, you go like, I get it, I get it. <laughs> and I sometimes did that. I went like, I got it. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. You know, like how I like to see it when, let's say, you have a phone and it asks you to upgrade again and again. You're like, I don't want any more upgrades. I'm good. <laughs> with the software you know so yeah we got we gotta just upgrade but thank you so much honestly it's a pleasure having you here today and oh i hope that people um who are going through similar thing but i do believe this story can help anyone going through difficulties you know as you said lost loved one heartbreak you know cancer any other illness um it's all about mindset and i think that's why your story is so um powerful in a way because you took us through that process and you told us stories which what was said you know what you held on to in a way which you were like don't want that you know <laughs> bye <laughs> bye think, see ya yeah and i think that's really really important so thank you for sharing your story safety and thank you for having me. You are truly awesome. And I'm sure you hear this a lot. Really, all of that that you're teaching us as the tribe, as you called us. Yeah, we're learning a lot from you. Where we're going like, oh, wow, I got to think about that. Man, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. This feedback is everything, honestly, to me. Thank you. And thank you for having me. So I hope we'll keep in touch. And if you will have any other, other realization, because you know, sometimes you just, I don't know, washing the dishes and it hits you. Oh, that should be a story or I've forgotten about that. Uh, reach out to me if you ever wanted to share anything else. And let's, let's keep in touch. Oh, I will promise to keep in touch. And I'm going to pause. Are we recording? We are going to end recording right now. <laughs> okay. So bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>